Could uh, everyone just give me a chat back if you can hear me loud and clear? All right, good, good, good. All right, everyone, I'm, gonna bring, I'm just going to bring in the next uh, presenter, Sandy Shankin. Um, had the opportunity to meet her a few times and her uh, husband. Um, many times in a lot of the events and expos at the uh, that we attend to and she's going to basically talk a little bit about um, what I have right here she's going to talk about the four steps to profit during earning session now you know one thing you're going to learn with all the speakers here and Sandy has a very very good technique and strategy how she goes about um, you know trading and one of the things I also do use the same type of trading style when it comes to earnings. There are ways how you could basically go out there and, and have a game plan and knowing you know, how these things move. Specifically, she's going to talk about uh, a stock that she traded, FSLR, which spiked over 16% after the reporting. And she's also going to talk about uh, American Wood, uh, Wood Market, AMWR, which spiked over 20%. So she has a great, great style. She's got a, um, but she also trades very similar to like all, the other pe all of us here. And one of the things is that we focus on, a lot of it is discipline and psychology, and just keep trading. Now, obviously, do they all work? No. But the thing is, um, if you follow the rules, that's how you succeed in it. And that's the way, you know, and we all have a great style of what we do. So Sandy's going to come in here, show you some of the, uh, the way to actually profit from those earning sessions because we deal with them every day. We hear about them every day. We see what happens after hours, and some of you probably want to get that little edge. So Sandy's going to come here and talk a little bit about it. So without further ado, let me pass it over to her. Sandy, the stage is all yours. Fausto, thank you so much, and thank you to you and your whole team there at uh, Cyber Trading University for putting on the uh, – the March Madness, uh, and for including Chaikin. So, um, as Fausto just said, I'm going to talk about the four steps to profit during earnings season. Uh, before I get started, a little bit of housekeeping I must get out of the way in that we are not registered as a broker-dealer or investment advisor with the SEC or with any state securities regulatory authority. Uh, Chaikin does not recommend the purchase of any stock or advise the suitability of any trade or investment. The information presented is generic in nature and is not to be construed as an endorsement, recommendation, investment advice, or any offer or solicitation to buy or sell securities of any kind, but slowly as information requiring further research as to suitability, accuracy, and appropriateness. Users bear sole responsibility for their own investment research and decisions. Okay, great. Now that I've got that out of the way. All right, so uh, as, as Fausto said, we invest using a very disciplined approach. It's a, it's a methodology that I've been using since I started investing in stocks in 2012. And uh, since I started, I have been outperforming the S&P and most money managers. So it is a proven methodology that um, has been proven and works. But let's apply this me methodology this morning to earnings and to have profit during earnings season. Um, as you all know, companies are required, public companies are re required to report their earnings four times a year. Next, next one coming up is April. So just give me a little feedback here, if you will, of what goes through your mind when I say profit during earnings. Um, is that an opportunity for you? Uh, do you see, as you see on the screen here, volatility, and you go, oh my God, you know, scared? Uh, fear, uh, excitement, um, you know, just if you could type into your chat box, please, some of the things that go through your mind. Risk, dangers, extreme volatility, fear, Frank says volatility, gaps, crazy moves, says Gerald, crush, volatility, crush, fear, gaps, do not trade, it. do not trade, Hannah says opportunity. Okay, a number of you either don't trade during earnings or you're giving me some negative feedback that it's scary, that you're fearful. Uh, LinkedIn killed my year. Um, and a few of you are, are saying opportunity. So what I'm going to walk you through in the next 45 minutes is, is how to see the opportunity, how to, how to make earnings season your friend and something you look forward to, which is what, what I do. I can't wait for earnings season because I tend to make very handsome uh, short-term profits. So that's what we're going to go through today. So as I've said, um, 
companies are required, public companies are required to report their earnings four times a year. These earnings reports will show us how well a company's business is going. Uh, and they basically reveal the financial health of the company. And the actual earnings compared to the analyst estimates is what drives stock price around earnings. So whether they miss um, or exceed earnings is really the question. If they come in same as last year or uh, you know equal to the prior years, it, it, it doesn't tend to be that volatile. The volatility tends to be around the difference between the actual earnings and the analyst estimates. So how are you going to identify that? Well, I see the opportunity here is to make short-term trading profits during those volatility sign periods of time and capture those big price moves. So if you can anticipate if a stock is going to beat or miss the earnings, estimate, then that's really the key to success. So keep this in mind, please. Maybe just write this down, that you want to identify the likelihood that a stock will beat or miss earnings. And that will enable you to make short-term trading profits. So my promise during the next 45 minutes is to show you how to take advantage of volatility and profit from earnings. And that is so that you can celebrate. Uh, we all like to uh, celebrate our winnings and have a good time and not only put our money away towards retirement uh, but also to have some fun along the way. So these are some celebrations that my husband Mark Chaikin and I have taken um, based on the profits that I've made with Chaikin Analytics. The top right corner um, is from Turkey uh, where we went in August of 2014. That was paid for entirely from my profit from one stock and that was Southwest Air in 2014. Uh, made a lot of money in, in Southwest Air, enough to take us to Turkey for two weeks and leave some left over. Last summer, we went to Vail for an international dance festival. And uh, in May, we're going to Rome. Um, we've just booked a, a week-long trip in, in Rome. And these these are all paid for by my profits that I've made either during you know the volatile earnings season or just uh, investing in general. So why should you listen to me? Well, since I've started investing in 2012 in individual stocks, I've beaten four out of five pros and the S&P 500 consistently. Last year, which we all know was not a great year, I found American Woodmark, which was up 90, 98%, Activision, which was up 94%, to name a few. And that was all in a flat to down market. So this year, which has been really challenging, as we all know, uh, the worst January and February they're talking about in a long time, um, but yet I've been able to identify and buy stocks like uh, ATO, Atmos Energy, it's up 15%. Broker is up 15%. Uh, and First Solo, as, uh, as Fausto mentioned, is up. It's actually up 10% at a stronger close last night. And this all I do on 15 minutes a day. You know, as Fausto said, he works part-time doing his trading. And I work, I will full-time in Chaikin Analytics on the marketing side of the business. And so I don't have a full-time a full day to watch the tape. So 15 minutes a day is basically what I allocate to my stocks. And I'm able to do that because I only own anywhere from 8 to 10 stocks at a given time. I mean, beyond that, I feel it gets into information overload. So um, this is another way that I find to, to simplify. So before I get into the four steps, let me just give you a little bit of background of how I got into investing in stocks. Uh, prior to 2008-09, I was in mutual funds. And I had engaged a professional who had come recommended to handle my investments as my 401k plan was growing. And I felt um, I really didn't have the confidence to manage my 401k plan or any of my financial matters for that matter. Uh, so I felt, well, the, the prudent thing to do would be to engage a professional, which is what I did. Uh, the professional sold the mutual funds that I had been in and put me into eight or ten of his, of his choice. And then, of course, along come... 2008, we all know what happens then. Everything starts falling apart. 
and I keep calling the advisor saying, boy, you know, don't you think we should we should sell and not just hold these because it's pretty evident everything's just you know coming tumbling down. And his advice to me was, no, just you know, hold on, uh, don't sell. It's all going to come back. And you know, forty percent down later, I uh, I couldn't take it anymore. So I uh, basically took it out of his care and um, said, I've got to I've got to learn how to do this myself. So I was pretty discouraged. Um, can any of you relate to this this feeling of total despair right here? where I just felt, wow, you know, I'd really thought I had done everything right. I was following, you know, the, the guidelines of, if you know, if you're not comfortable doing something, hire a professional to do it for you. And, um, you know, and, and that, that system let me down. I was, I spent years building up that 401k plan and then just saw it, you know, disappear by 40% practically overnight. It was pretty devastating. I see a number of you are saying yes. Um, you unfortunately uh, had that same experience. So this is the pain that uh, I want to help you avoid. Uh, you don't want to feel like this, and I don't ever want to feel like this again. So after that uh, fiasco, I took the money back. I opened a Vanguard account. I put it in an S and P 500 account until I could figure out what to do. But I resolved that I was going to take control and that I was not going to put myself in somebody else's hands fully uh, again. Now, with that being said, uh, many of our customers um, are, are financial planners, money managers, wealth advisors. And many of our clients use wealth managers, which is terrific. If you do that, that's perfectly fine. But what I would suggest is don't do what I do, what I did of just turning it over blindly and not being involved. So when you work with a advisor, be sure, be sure that you stay involved and become part of the conversation and part of the process because, you know, that's where, you know, you really have, there's nobody more interested in taking better care of your money than you. So I'm back on track now. I, I have um, now manage my own uh, money now since 2012 when we first started uh, Chaken Analytics and came out with the uh, the power gauge rating. Um, and that's what I'm going to share with you today of how I use Chaken Analytics, which we call the Financial Freedom Fast Track, and how I've used it to build a, a, uh, a portfolio that not only um, beats the S&P but beats most money managers. So this is how I hope you all will feel at the end of this presentation. You want to feel confident about your investing, not fearful. And I really think confidence is the bedrock of, of every good trading decision because if you're not feeling confident about your ability, you tend either not to participate at all or you make bad decisions. And right now this, this confidence um, really permeates other aspects of my life as well, not just my financial well-being. but it's really um, kind of rolled over into every other aspect, aspect of my life as well. So it's a good thing. We all, we all need to be confident. So the four steps that we're going to go through on how to profit from earnings, um, I'm going to walk through one by one. And in doing so, many of the examples that I use are from my own por portfolio. I mean, since I trade or invest in eight or ten stocks at any given time, um, I, I prefer to use examples from my own uh, portfolio, which then allow me to walk you through what's going on in my head as to why I made the choices and the decisions that I did. So let's start with the first step. Um, one is to know where a stock is headed. And Fausto said this as well in just an hour ago on his presentation is no matter what you're trading, whether it's, it's day trading, long investing, swing trading, options, you need to know where a stock is headed. It sounds very simple, um, but it is, it is the foundation of good investing. Know where a stock is heading. Well, how do you, how do you know? Well, we, we put the, um, the, the answer on that into a model, the Chaken Power Gauge model, which is a 20-factor model that my husband, Mark, created. And what this model does is to give an overall rating of the 
potential of a stock to out or underperform the market over the next three to six months. So write that down too, please, if you would. Power gauge rating, three to six months potential. And this, is, think of it as a GPS for stocks. It tells you where that stock is headed. Now, it looks quite simple here, doesn't it? It's a very simple gauge, like a gas gauge on a Volkswagen, you know, full, empty. It says very bullish, you know, to very bearish. But there's an awful lot going on underneath the surface, you know, than meets the eye. Uh, the, the model itself is made of four basic components, one of them being earnings performance. And I highlight that here because that's the segment we're going to be talking about this morning. Uh, but these four components then are rolled up into an overall power gauge rating. And if you want to drill down, excuse me, on any of these four components, you'll see five factors. So there's a total of 20 factors overall that make up this model. <coughs> excuse me. And go into the overall power gauge rating. So you can either get a very quick read on a stock, you know, from very bearish to very bullish, or you can drill down on any of the four components. And you can even drill down further, as I've done here, on earnings performance. And you'll see how those five factors then affect the overall rating for earnings. And that also leads to, in the expert opinions category, the earnings estimate revisions. So how did we come up with this? Well. After the 2009 meltdown, where Mark and I were just getting together at that, at that time in our lives, and Mark saw my, me and the pain that I went through, and the fact that I was not alone, that there were absolutely, you know, actually millions and billions of dollars that were leaving traditional brokerage firms and going into self-managed accounts like I set up for myself at Vanguard. Yet we didn't have the tools. I mean, as Fausto said, you've got to have the right tools. Well, I didn't have the right tools. I, I mean, I wouldn't have known what tools to look for, frankly. So not only did I not have the right tools, but I didn't have, I didn't have any education either in, in how to invest in the stock market. So Mark said, well, you know, I'm going to come out of retirement. He had sold his company to a division of Reuters in 1992 and had been retired and he said I'm coming out of retirement because for 40 some years on Wall Street I created tools for the Wall Street Pro so that they could make better decisions and so that they could make better decisions for their clients about what stocks to buy or sell so he said I'm going to take those same tools that I created for the pros but roll it into um, a workstation that is easy enough for someone like me an individual to understand and that's how that's how chicken analytics got started so I really became the poster child for uh, the need in the marketplace for individuals to have a clear path to success and that was then you know the outcome was the the power gauge rating which is the centerpiece of of all of our tools um, the, the model is important because it takes the emotion out of investing. How many of you feel like you've made a decision, say just this year, a decision based on emotion rather than fact? I mean, let's be honest, it's really, it's really easy to do, isn't it? It's human nature, I'm afraid. Um, and I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing lots of yeses. Yes, of course, we all, you know, we're human beings. So we do, um, it's pretty hard to just put your emotions on the sidelines. but what uh, James O'Shaughnessy says, and he's a famous investor, he said models beat human forecasters because they reliably and consistently apply the same criteria time after time as opposed to human beings who are swayed by emotions. So think about depending on this model to guide you. Is it right all the time? No, of course not. I mean, anyone who's investing in the stock market knows that there's nothing that's 100% perfect. But is it right most of the time? Yeah, I'd say 70% of the time. It's, it is. So let that be an indicator and let that guide you as opposed to your emotions, you know, which can really lead you astray. So here's how we can drill down on those earnings for a stock. I took, this is a stock I own, Bruker. And this is a stock chart from our uh, desktop application. We also uh, 
have this on the iPad, and they both come uh, bundled together in the same subscription. Um, but you can drill down, as I've done here, on the earnings component. And so you can see here, of those five components, most of them are either neutral or very bullish. And I overlaid on this the earnings uh, calendar, which you can do as well in Chaken Analytics. This is a very new feature we've just introduced a couple of weeks ago, and that's why I'm talking about it today, because this is really a great way to zero in on, on those high volatility and make them work for you. You can see these little triangles here are uh, buy signals we have on Bruker. And you can see that they triggered right before this stock uh, uh, did, uh, announced their earnings a couple of weeks ago. And you can see what happened. With a very bullish stock, this, this stock is rated very bullish. Um, what tends to happen in earnings season is these, st these stocks outperform the analyst estimates and look what happens it spiked way up so this stock will you know spiked up about 10% right here right after they reported and it's done nothing but pretty much go pretty much straight up with a little bit of pullback right now but this is this is how you can use the power gauge rating to guide you you know look for these earnings strongholds before you're going into a into a stock that's reporting earnings and I'm showing you along the way here how how you can identify that on our charts. So before we get into that, just a little bit of um, confidence building for the power gauge rating. We've done all sorts of back testing of um, and real time testing. And what we have shown over the last 16 years that if you only bought stocks that we rated very bullish, your portfolio would be up an average of almost 20% a year. Likewise, if you bought only bearish stocks, uh, you would be down 3%. So I always say you can do your own back testing, and I'll show you, I'll show you how when we get to a, a detailed stock chart. But it's pretty easy to identify for yourself whether you can have confidence in that power gauge rating for any particular stock or not. Uh, we've also been quoted and seen on most uh, major uh, financial publications, including a very recent article by Mike Hogan and Barron's. Uh, but time, you know, time is a really precious commodity. And I always say we're time poor. You know, we live in a new co economy of being time poor. Nobody that I'm aware of, at least, has enough time in their day to do what you want. If anyone has enough time uh, in your day to do what you want, type in, type in time, okay, if you would. Uh, we get a lot of... Uh, testimonials we get them practically every day and Cheryl here speaks to something that's very you know near to my heart is that there's not enough time in the day to do the work shake and puts before her in minutes so we, we one part of our goal here uh, in educating you is also to save you time you know get get right to the the meat of the of the problem and not spend hours researching okay so we need to know the direction of a stock, which is where the power gauge rating will help us. But in addition to that, you want to go one step further. And in addition to the power gauge rating, what we call a classic bull, are stocks that have these four characteristics. The power gauge rating is not only uh, is bullish, but the price is trending up, check and money flow is strong, and relative performance is strong. And what do I mean by that? Well, here's an example from the iPad of uh, Atmos Energy. This stock is up 15% a year. I've, I've owned this stock. Uh, I bought this on one of these buy signals back in here. And if you can look at the bottom, this ribbon along the bottom line, this is the one-year historical power gauge rating. And what this shows you is it's gone from neutral back in July, August to bullish and it's remained bullish ever since. So that's the power gauge rating there which is also recapped here in a very bullish rating. Relative strength. Uh, this is how strong does this stock perform relative to the S&P 500. And I always say because I'm, I'm a long investor if I'm going to invest in stocks I want them to outperform the S&P. I don't want just average returns which have tend to be 7% a year 
uh, by numerous uh, methodologies. 7% a year return isn't bad, but I want to do better than that. I want to outperform the S&P. So thus, I only want to invest in stocks going into them that have power, uh, relative strength that outperforms the S&P. And you can see it clearly displayed in this red-green heat map here. Green, it outperforms. Red, it underperforms. Shake and money flow. This is an indicator Mark created uh, some 35 years ago for the Wall Street pros. And what it does, and it's on every major technical analysis package worldwide, but what it does is it measures professional money, institutional money that goes in and out of that particular stock. And why, why is that important? Does anyone know why you would want to know the institutions if they're buying or selling a stock you're interested in? They move the market. Wayne, you're absolutely right. Follow the money. Fausto said, follow the smart money. Um, Wayne, you're, you're dead on. So are you, Ray and Kenny. They move the market. The trades that you and I make are not big enough to move prices. However, institutions trade in such big numbers that they affect the supply and demand. It took me a while when I started investing to understand that a stock price moves because of supply and demand. It's as simple as that. I come from the cosmetic business in New York. I worked for L'Oreal and Elizabeth Arden. A fragrance was $100 a, a, an ounce, for instance, if I bought that fragrance in December or if I bought it the following June. It was still the same price. And we obviously know that's not the same case with, with a stock because a stock is based on a different uh, metric. It's based on supply and demand. So if institutions are selling the stock, they're putting a lot of inventory into the market which means there's fewer buyers for it. Thus, it drives the price down. But on the reverse side, if institutions are buying, as you can see, they've been buying a lot of ATO, look what happens to the price. It tends to move up because it's becoming more scarce. And if there's a commodity is more scarce, you know, you charge more um, you know, to limit the, limit the availability, limit the, limit the potential pool of buyers. So it's just a, it's a different way of looking at it. It's not, it's not like any other business I'm, I've been in that's based on supply and demand. But that's a really important thing that we've got to know as investors and traders is that the institutional traders move the prices. And therefore, we got to watch what they're doing. So this is a classic bull because all these things are lining up. And when you get all of this green in your chart, uh, look what happens. You know, the price just accelerates. Um, let's look at another example. First solar. Fausto mes mentioned this is a stock I'm going to be talking about uh, quite a bit today. Um, and this, this has been my favorite trade. I don't trade every week, so um, it's my most recent trade, but my favorite trade. Um, this is a stock I got into twice. But you can, again, let's look at before I get into the earnings component of it, let's just look at this from a classic bull. Does this have all the same green components? Power gauge rating is strong. It's been strong since October. Relative price, relative strength, excuse me, is outperforming the markets. It's about that same time, October. And look at the money flow. Money flow has been strong since that same time frame. So look what happens to this stock come October when you go from neutral to negative, to negative, to all positive, this, the, the price takes off. And this is how, this is how easy it is to use uh, these visual screens of a stock chart. And so the opportunity is to get into these stocks when they're just starting out here and on their way up. Let me explain this overbought, oversold here. I call this this, this zigzagging line. Um, what this helps me with is timing. I want to buy a stock when it's down in a dip. Like you can see this trough here correlates, for instance, here. If I'm going to sell a stock, I want to buy, sell it when it's peaking up at the top of this mountain because that correlates to a higher price. Since there's so much volatility in every stock price, it's always going to be moving up and down. You want to 
buy it when it's down, dipping down, zigging down, and you want to sell it when it's zigging up. And that's that's how that can really help you identify when to get into a stock. Now I got into this stock twice. I got into it back here in uh, January, mid-January at 59. I'd had this stock on my watch list. I actually had bought some back in August. Uh, but I had it on my watch list because I thought this was a good potential stock. And as everything lined up, I'm becoming more and more interested in it. I get this little triangle here, which is an oversold buy signal. As you can see, it correlates to this dip down. So I bought more right in here at 59. Now, mind you, this was January 15th. Think back to January 15th. What do you remember about the market? I remember a lot of fear, a lot of talk of recession. What was me? Markets tanking. Is this another 2008? Um, that was the climate then. But I'm buying stock January 15th, the worst January on record. And everything, you know, everyone was woe is me. How did I know to buy? Because I had the confidence. See, it goes back again to this confidence factor. You know, I had confidence because look at this chart. Everything's green and the price is trending up. Hallelujah. That's great. So I bought it here. Uh, it went up to 72 and then it pulled back again. And all this craziness. So the February volatility. So February 19th, I got another oversold buy signal. I bought it again. Again, in this, you know, chaotic market. Uh, where everyone is concerned about the, the market uh, failing us in a recession, a worldwide recession, uh, I'm buying. And I not only bought once, but I bought twice. So that's the conviction that tools like these can give you. you know, despite you know, January and February being two of the worst months in, in, in history, um, you know, I'm buying. And, th and that's the confidence that I want to give you too as well. You can see what happened. They reported earnings. Uh, and, and spiked up. Here's, you know, here's the 16% spike. And I bought right before they reported earnings and it spiked up and I took advantage of that nice, um, nice windfall. So here's uh, another one of our uh, testimonials from Rich. Uh, he bought Solar City. It was in the same industry group as First Solar. But Chaikin had rated it poorly. You can see here it has a bullish rating. Very negative relative strength, and look at the money, tons of money coming out. And look what happens to the price, kerplunk. This is not a stock you'd want to own, but Rich didn't have Chaikin, so unfortunately he bought this instead of FSLR. If he had Chaikin, he would have bought FSLR. It would have been as clear as uh, knowing the difference between red and green. So let's identify the classic bears, because just as importantly as it is to identify classic bulls, we've got to also identify these bearish patterns and get them out of our portfolio before they tank or um, use them and trade options. A lot of our subscribers have made a lot of money recently trading options. Uh, LinkedIn. Um, one of you, one of you earlier said that you got you got crushed with LinkedIn. If you had shaken, you wouldn't have gotten crushed. You would have known to get out. Let's look at the pattern here. It's been a bearish power gauge rating for almost a year. Little little movement here to neutral before it went back to bearish. For the most part, negative relative strength. That means this stock is underperforming the S&P 500. And for the most part, money is coming out instead of going in. And again, when these three indicators line up as they did in January, February, uh, right before they reported earnings, this gives you fair warning, get out. And if that didn't, if that wasn't uh, convincing enough, it we triggered one of these uh, sell signals here, this red triangle is a reversal sell signal that triggered right before they reported earnings and dropped 50% uh, of their value, they dropped 100 points. Um, how many of you can see how clear this is to help warn you that how many of you can see that if you had shaken 
uh, back in January and February and saw this setup, you would have known to avoid this or uh, put a put option on it and make some money betting on its way down. Denise, Marcel, Mike, Judy, easy to understand. Yes, yes, yes. Great. Okay, awesome. So this sounds like this is making sense. You're all understanding the power gauge rating and how to read these charts because this is really the foundation <laughs> for the conversation here and for the chicken. Yes, Richard, there is a five-year uh, trend as well. You can see up here, you can toggle between one year and five years. Uh, so you can see a, a longer trend line if you want. All right, so let's look at another uh, loser, Netflix. Uh, now, this stock was not a loser in 2015. It was the number one stock on Motley Fool's top 10 stocks of 2015. It was up 135% last year, yet now it's down 13%. So, you know, another one of our premises is that buy and hold doesn't work. You know, you can't just blindly buy a stock and say you're going to keep it for five years. You know, look at these swings. You don't want to ride this stock, you know, having ridden it up 135%. You don't want to see the stock now come crashing down. Uh, you want to know to be out of this stock before then. This is now at 101. It's actually down 26% from its peak back in December 7th. Uh, and that was right up here. Um, but here again, you get a reversal sell signal uh, mid-January. This is January 13th where my pointer is, right before they reported earnings. And look what happened when this stock reported earnings, uh, you know, kerplunk. But look again at the setup. Power gauge was bearish. Money was coming out. Relative strength was slightly positive, And you get a sell signal. So how many of you can clearly see that if you had had this stock chart to look at back on January 13th when this sell signal triggered right before they reported earnings, that could have saved you a lot of pain. Can't see your pointer. Okay, it's right in here. Sorry. Okay, great. That's that's awesome. You guys are all getting it. I'm thrilled. Okay, another testimonial uh, from Jim. As of yesterday, he's made enough to pay for the annual subscription, so the rest of the year is just gravy. I'm a small-time investor. Just started trading actively last year. Year-to-date, I'm up over 54%. That in itself would be great year, but it's only five weeks. And this is, I mean, he started the first of the year in the worst month in years, and he's up 54%. So this is all doable, guys, you know, and I say... I always say I'm the poster child. If I can do this with no prior experience in, in finance or the stock market, so can you. Eric has been using Jaken for only several weeks when he wrote this a couple of weeks ago. He's already closed two trades for gains of 70% and 115%. Over the years, I've tried different software packages and programs. Jaken is by far the most straightforward analysis product I've ever used. And we do pride ourselves on being straightforward. That's what we're aimed to do. You know, make it make it simple. This is not as complex as a lot of the uh, talking heads on CNBC would like to have you think. All right, time to sell. This is another one of our steps. Is it okay to move on? Do you all understand the difference between classic bulls and classic bears? Was that clear? Uh, John's, uh, can you show us the stock chart from January without February? Well, unfortunately, I'm not. I can't. These are all preloaded slides at this point, um, but I can't. But you can call our our customer success eight seven seven nine stocks, uh, and they can walk you through that uh, and show you an example of just January. Okay, so let's move on. You all say, sure, you're, you're on the same page with me, which is great. Uh, let's move on to alerts. This, in addition to that over, oversold, overbought signal, helps you identify timing. Who has trouble identifying timing? When to get in, when to get out? I think it's pretty easy when to get in. What's hard is knowing when to get out. Would you agree? Yeah, lots of yeses. <laughs> Kenny, 
my hash Judy. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. That that is a challenge. Well, the signals, as I've alluded to during this presentation, the signals will help you identify when, and you can overlay these signals on any list. This is my watch list. I keep a list in the system of what I own, and then I keep a watch list. Now, this is telling me that there's an oversold buy signal back February 16th on these four stocks. First one is FSLR, First Solar. It was 61 back then. Let's see how they're doing today. It was 61 then. It's now 72 today. It's up 19% in the last month. Uh, Ruth, it was 16 then. It's now almost 18. It's up 10%. Um, New Jersey Resources, this is pretty much flat. It's only up 1%. Uh, Bruker, that's an example we've already looked at. That triggered a relative strength buy signal at 23. It's now at 27. One month later, it's up 17%. So these can really help you identify when to get in and get in at a good time. Now, what I've done here, and I'm using First Solar repeatedly throughout so that I can show you different aspects of the system. Here, I've overlaid the earnings overlay because the topic, of course, is how to profit during earnings season. So how do you know when a stock is reporting earnings? This is First Solar on the desktop. And as you can see, these EPS uh, kind of lines here, these are all green, meaning they uh, beat analyst estimates back here uh, a year ago. So they, they missed. That's why it's red. You can overlay this uh, view on any stock. It also will give it clearly to you when you pull up this stock chart. You don't have to even look for it. It kind of tells you right up on the navigation bar when it's reporting and whether it's a bullish or a bearish outlook. But I, you can see when I bought back in February, February 19th, on this oversold buy signal, I knew they were reporting earnings the following week. So I said, ha, ah, I want to buy this stock. Everything's green. I already own some. I'm going to buy more. Uh, and I, I don't hesitate to double up on a stock if I see it has a strong potential like this. And I'm betting that they're going to exceed analyst expectations because, look, they have for the last couple of times. And that was before everything turned green in our system. So now that you've got everything green in our system and an upcoming earnings and a buy signal on a pullback to 62, I, I, uh, I bought more and went into earnings. And, and as Fausto said, that popped up 16%. This is not rocket science, guys. You know, if I can do this, Believe me, you know, so can you. It's as easy as reading the chart, overlaying the EPS, and going with all green or on the downside, you know, go with all, all, all red. Here's another one, Bruker, you know, another stock that I own. Got into this one, you know, before they reported earnings. Now, they had some money coming out, but you can see it turned around. And you can see what happened when it turned around and jived with relative strength and power gauge rating of strong, then it really takes off. And this stock has gone you know, pretty much straight up since they reported earnings. Uh, that was about a month ago. So this is the overlay that you can see on the stock chart when you're on the workstation. You know, and it will, you know, you can drill down for this, this detail. Uh, there's not enough time to go through this in detail to, you know, on this, on this webinar. But suffice it to say that um, you can overlay that earnings on any stock or on any uh, stock list and find out what's reporting when. So I'm going to use American Woodmark. This is one of the stocks that I owned last year. It was up 98% last year in a market that was down, what, 2% for the year. Uh, this was a huge winner last year, and I owned it for a good part of its run. This is a good example of when to buy and when to sell and how to take advantage of earnings. So I, I have this on my watch list, and I bought it back uh, April a year ago, almost a year, almost a full year ago. 
uh, and I was waiting for a buy signal. I got a buy signal, so I bought it back here at 54. You can see everything lined up. However, it kind of went sideways for a while. I got some more signals. They reported earnings. Uh, it went sideways a little bit more. And then they reported earnings in here in August, August 20th. And the stock popped up 25% uh, from the three months that I had owned it. So I sold it quickly uh, right after they reported, the morning they reported. The volatility tends to be most the day after they report. So I sold it the day after they reported. I made $3,800. I said, thanks very much. I said, you know, I really like this stock. It's in a strong industry group. Everything was green. You know, I saw it continue to go up again. I thought, well, gee, maybe, you know, I should buy this stock back. So I put it back on my watch list, waited for the right time, waited for the pullback. I got it by signal here, and it pulled back. You can see it's got this oversold condition right here. Everything else was green. And I knew then that they were going into earnings the following week. So I bought it here November 11th at 72 with that buy signal. And then I sold it less than 10 days later after it spiked up 20% to 90. And then I took my, my second profit on this stock and said thank you very much and then I have not been tempted to buy this stock back because look what's happened. Money flow turned negative and then everything else started to turn. Power gauge turned neutral, relative strength turns negative, this turned negative at about 80 early January and look what happened. You know the stock just kind of dropped all the way down. So this is not a stock I would want to own today but boy did I take advantage of those big runs last year. And you can too, using this same methodology that I'm showing you here. Amazon, you know, how can you use this on the way down to bet on a stock on the way down? Well, the same way. I, had, I took Amazon. <clears throat> this is one of those FANG stocks, one of the most uh, widely held stocks and popular stocks of 2015. This was number two on Motley Fool's top 10 stocks of 2015. It was up 118% last year, but now it's down 18%. So just like Netflix, you know, you can't buy and hold. You got to know when to get out of these. And the system makes it pretty darn clear. Power Gauge never really went uh, bullish on this. Uh, it stayed neutral. But then when it turned negative, look what happens here. Money flow starts going negative. A couple weeks later, relative strength kicks in, you know, and this bearish uh, turnaround at on January 11th at 619 was a forerunner of what was going to happen when they reported earnings. And if that didn't convince you to get out of this stock or, or put a put option on it, um, this sell signal would have. You get this nice sell signal literally right before they reported earnings. And we featured this, you know, Mark issues what he calls Market Insights. It's a market commentary newsletter, which is uh, gold, actually. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a hotbed of gold ideas, um, and our subscribers read it religiously and profit from it, as they did with Amazon, because Mark featured Amazon right before they reported earnings back in January saying uh, put options on stocks like Amazon and Netflix are attractive. And lo and behold, you know, look what happens. You know, it did drop. This was uh, what, what happened after, they, after hours trading. It dropped 13% in after hours trading. Um, but we had subscribers who took advantage of that. And this fellow, Harry, made over $17,000 just with option trades on Google, Amazon, and Priceline. It's all from the Power Gauge rating. It's a godsend. I've been a subscriber for not even two weeks. You've changed my life. Harry was on a webinar Mark gave uh, Tuesday night, and he gave us an ex another example of how he just made $48,000 with Chaken. So, um, you know, these are real stories. This, this can be done. So let's recap. We have a few minutes left. Let's recap the four steps to profit from earnings. Uh, one, you got to know the direction a stock is going. That's not 
just for earnings, but for any type of investing or options. Be able to identify the classic bull or bear. Use the signals to help you identify the time to buy and time to sell. And then be aware of a, a stock's upcoming earnings date and whether the analysts are betting that they're going to beat or miss it. And by now, I hope by going through these four steps, you've discovered how to take advantage of volatility so that you can too reap the rewards and go to places you know like Turkey or Vale or you know the beach or just you know make make your money and sock it away into your retirement account but this is all manageable Rex here um, gave us a testimonial about Amazon another Amazon trade great trade profit covered next year's total cost of our two months in Hawaii after taxes can't even imagine how much it cost to go to Hawaii for two months. Uh, so he obviously made made a boatload on it. I thought I was doing well when I paid for two weeks in Turkey with uh, Southwest Air, but good for Rex. Um, another uh, subscriber who profited from our first solar. This is one of your oversold watch lists. You stress this enough to penetrate my thick so skull. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Harris is one of our customer success managers, and each of our subscribers have a success manager who they work with, who more or less mentors them along the way. Um, and Harry, uh, no, this isn't Harry. I'm sorry. Harris was uh, mentoring this fellow to look at for solo, and he says it's paid for shaking on this one. Now let's work for covering my next ten years. Okay, awesome. So we want you to be our next success story, and therefore we're going to make you a special offer now to take uh, an analytics so that you can get on the financial freedom fast track as well. So I haven't even hit the tip of the iceberg of uh, the features that we offer. We offer a stock screener. You can actually screen stocks that have certain criteria based on your criteria. You can also uh, trade options. We've integrated Options Play, which uh, really simplifies the whole options decision-making process, gives you certain options for options, uh, and gives you clear-cut examples of what they mean in the different scenarios. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't been able to address the questions along the way, um, just because of our time here. Data feed, we use FactSet and we use Zacks for our data feeds. They're in real time. Here's another subscriber. Tell you how absolutely incredible Chaikin's become. It started great, but with the options and screener additions, I feel it's absolutely the best product. We added all of this in the fall, so you're getting in now at a really good time because you now have the advantage of the options um, overlay, the screener additions, and of course the earnings that just went in. These all were loaded into the workstation at no additional cost to our subscribers. So normally an annual subscription to financial uh, to Chaikin Analytics is $1,950. Um, we're going to make you a special offer. Uh, the value of this uh, is really over $5,600 and I highlight these coaching calls because I'm not aware of a company that sells a software that then um, coaches you as extensively as we do. Um, we get you in immediately. So when you subscribe, you will get into, well, it's the weekend now, but you'll get into a Monday session, a one hour, we call it onboarding, where you, you will be walked through all of the uh, aspects of the workstation and how to use them so that you're comfortable. If you're not comfortable enough, you schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, with our customer support team and they will actually walk you through and show you how the methodology jives with your uh, thinking and methodology and actually how to use it to fit your own trading style. Uh, so I, I highlight these because I think these are really invaluable and our subscribers who take advantage of these are by far exceed the subscribers who don't because if you don't know how to use the system to its full advantage you obviously won't be reaping the biggest rewards and we want you to reap the biggest awards. Uh, 
So instead of $5,800, this uh, subscription is usually uh, $1,950. But let's add a few more things in here. We added in the screener the earnings. And in addition to Mark's weekly market insights, you're going to get a daily Monday through Friday insight newsletter from our chief market strategist with specific buy-sell ideas and his commentary, his market commentary on what's happened overnight and where the market is going this next, this next week. So this all, uh, instead of $7,600, is it, again, a 1950 value, but, sorry, these slides are a little distorted here, but for $1,650, you can subscribe to Chaken by midnight Sunday night and take that $300 off. So call this number here, the 877-697-6783, uh, or go online here, chakenanalytics.com slash CTU. That'll automatically take the $300 discount off on a $1,650 subscription for an annual service. So, phew, $1,159. We just made it. Perfect. Um, oh, Jim, awesome. I'm a subscriber and it is paid for itself. I may take a four-year subscription for a discount. Go for it, Jim. Yeah, we're, we've offered our subscribers a special for a, a four-year discount, and it's been wildly successful. <laughs> so go for it. You know how much money it can save you and make you. Any trial period. We don't, we don't really go with trials. Uh, if you want to take a monthly for $195 and try it, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but I think, like Jim, you'll see that uh, you know your first trade is going to pay for your annual subscription. Um, if it doesn't, you can come back to me individually and let's talk about it. Um, but Fausto, I think that I'm I'm at the end of my hour here. 12 o'clock exactly. So I'm right on time. Um, I apologize for not getting to all your questions. Um, but if you want to email me, sandy at shakenanalytics.com, happy to answer any questions or call this number as well. And they'll be able, to, our support staff will be able to answer your questions just as well. So thank you all for your attention. You've been a fantastic audience. And uh, good luck in your trading.